Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Michael Novakovich. I'm the president and CEO of Visit Tri-Cities, and we're assembled here today as leaders from the communities within Benton and Franklin counties to talk about our efforts as it relates to the fight against COVID, specifically as it relates to slowing the transmission here in our community, but also reopening our community. Joining us today, you're going to see and hear from representatives from Benton and Franklin counties, the Benton and Franklin Health District. You're going to hear from cities, the cities of Kennewick, Richland, Pasco, West Richland, Prosser, Connell, and Benton City. Uh, we also have local health care here as well, and certainly you're going to be hearing from the Benton Franklin Health District. Is there's a great deal of partnership and collaboration happening in our communities? A lot of behind the scenes work going on. You're going to hear all about that today as we map out the road to recovery here in the Tri Cities, but as we also talk about what it's going to take for us to successfully and safely reopen. Looking forward to that. I do want to point out that we have a couple of representatives here today providing sign language. We have Jenny and Paula, who you can't see off. The screen. Well, at this time, I'd like to welcome Dr. Amy Person up to talk to you about some of the endeavors of the Health District. Thank you, Michael. Um, it really has been um, a community effort. We have seen our um, city and county leaders, our community organizations, um, all coming together. Um, and really, the biggest push we've had is uh, we need masks on to move on. Um, I don't know how to put it any plainer than that, um, masks work. Um, we initially did not have that much evidence, but as time has gone on, we have seen clearly communities where they are wearing masks and face coverings when they're in public are doing better. They have lower rates of disease. We see that in Washington State. We've seen that across the globe. Uh, even uh, Yakima, uh, who's had uh, even worse time with COVID-19 than we have uh, since they started their uh, significant masking directives, um, have seen a decrease in their disease. We know that over half of the persons in Benton and Franklin counties do appear to be wearing masks, which is good, uh, but it's not good enough. We really need to see 80 to 90 percent of persons wearing masks. Um, we've asked, I've issued uh, directives for uh, individuals to wear masks, um, but we're still not seeing the numbers where they need to be. Uh, so I will also be issuing um, a directive for businesses, um, essentially to have a no mask, no service rule. Uh, if individuals are not wearing masks, they should not be allowed within that business. Uh, this mirrors the rule that the governor uh, put into place in Yakima. And at our meeting with the governor yesterday, um, that was discussed as an option. Uh, but this is something we can't wait on. We need people wearing masks. Um, if we don't get our mask use up, um, two things are going to happen, I think. one. Uh, we're not going to be able to move forward the way that I know everyone in this community would like to. Um, and two, we are not going to be able to get this disease under control. Uh, when everyone was staying at home, or at least most people were staying at home, masks were not as big an issue because people were not interacting with others outside their family. They were not spending time within six feet of them. Um, but as people have started venturing out, as they're going into businesses, um, as they are having gatherings, uh, whether allowed or not, um, we are seeing more cases. So until there is a vaccine, we need to keep, we need to stop spreading virus from person to person. And the way for us to do that is to use face coverings. When I'm wearing a face covering, it's not because I'm worried about getting COVID-19, it's because I'm worried that I might spread that to someone else if I became infected. Because I could be infected with COVID-19 and have no symptoms. I could do fine, um, but the person that I'm next to at the grocery store who's serving me, maybe they won't be fine if they catch it from me. So really, this is about looking out for other people in the community. And I know we can do that as a community. We see that time and time again. If there's a need, uh, people need donations, everybody steps up, you know. We donate food, we donate money, 
Um, what we're asking people now to do is to donate, I'll say a little of their free will, to say, I am going to accept wearing this mask because I know it's good for this community. Um, you know, our numbers now, we're at uh, over 3,300 cases total. Uh, so those numbers keep going up. Um, and they don't just keep going up because we are doing more testing. Um, I'll use it as an example. Kitsap County is about the same size as us. They run uh, about the same number of tests that we have. Um, over the last couple weeks, they've averaged three cases a day. We're averaging 45 cases a day. So it's not just testing. This is disease that we are seeing in our community, and it's disease that we need to do something about. And wearing that mask, wearing that face covering is really um, one of the essential pieces of that. Um, again, it's not going to be the only thing people need to do. We still need to maintain physical distance. We need to practice good hand washing and disinfecting our sur surfaces. So this is a virus that will be with us for a while. So it's not going to be a one-stop simple fix. Uh, but without wearing masks, we are not going to get to where we need to be. I'm going to talk a little bit about testing as well. There are the two community testing sites, um, one in Benton and Franklin counties that are being run by the National Guard. Um, those sites will be closed uh, over uh, the holiday weekend on Friday and Saturday. Normally they're open um, Tuesday through Saturday um, in the back parking lot here and then over at the HAPO Center. We are in um, talks with the state. Um, and we anticipate that we will be getting some additional mobile community testing resources so that we can continue um, to find persons who are infected and to help them safely isolate at home and so that we can find the persons that they may have been in contact with who may get infected and ask them also to safely quarantine at home. Again, breaking the cycle of Transmission is the only way that we are going to be able to keep our community safe. We know that this community is suffering as well. A lot of people are under stress. Um, we have heard, you know, increases in suicides, domestic violence calls, I think because of the economic and psychological stress that people are feeling. Um, and we do want you also to know that there are resources um, available in our community. Um, you can go on the Benton Franklin Health District website and we do have a list of some of those resources. I am just going to um, tell you there is also a single phone number available, sorry, uh, through the Washington State Corona Virus Response. Uh, so 833-681-0211. Um, you can call that um, if you are feeling stressed. Uh, locally, you can also always call 211. Besides being the number to call to make appointments for community testing, they are also a great resource uh, for community needs. Uh, so again, we've got to mask on, to move on, uh, because I think it is possible for us to both uh, open businesses and to keep this community safe from COVID, but only if all of us are doing our part. Thank you. Uh, yesterday, many of us here had a chance to meet with the governor. He came to our area. And certainly, we understand his position and the uh, positions of the Secretary of Health, John Weissman, was here too. Um, we don't totally agree with it. Um, we've done a lot of things here in our community, especially in the last few weeks. As, as a community and community leaders, um, things that we can bring our numbers down, and, th and that's the point. We need to bring our numbers down. Um, we collectively asked the governor to give us a directive, as he did with Yakima, on the businesses, but it's, but, uh, it's glad, glad to hear that uh, Dr. Pearson is going forward with that here. Um, we've, we've tried to find ways to get our businesses open, and we continue to do that. But we really need to um, come together, wear our mask, social distance, don't have large gatherings, 
because that only drives our numbers up because we see it after holidays and such. So we really need to adhere to those principles. It, it has been frustrating for all of us. I know it's been frustrating for our business people, but if we want to get them open, we, we need to, we need to you know, respect those directives from the governor's office and let's work together to bring us into new phases so we can get those businesses open. So thank you very much. So as Commissioner Delvin just said, we had a productive meeting with the governor yesterday. Clearly we didn't get the answer that we were hoping for, but I'll tell you there were a few very important and I think uh, encouraging things that came out of that meeting. One was we're in a room in a one-on-one -on -one meeting with the governor, with all the mayors, county commissioners, representatives of the people of our community. And that sent a very clear message to the governor that we understand that we're in this together, that we understand where he's coming from, which is for him, it's about infection numbers. And uh, that was the encouraging part. The less encouraging part was, again, that he's all about the numbers. He assured us that this is not political in any way for some of the people who have come to me and suggested that was the case, he was clear in that. Uh, I will tell you that in the meeting, uh, when it was evident that we were not going to get the relief to move to 1.5 that we were seeking, uh, I proposed the notion that, Governor, perhaps you would just allow us to move to 1.5 now, monitor us for the next three or four weeks, and let us demonstrate to you our collective will to bring those numbers down. Uh, did my best, as did all the others in the room. This was a, a collective effort to persuade him that uh, we were committed, we were united, and that we could demonstrate to him that we could bring those numbers down. His uh, reply, in essence, was, uh, it isn't that I don't trust you, but you're going to have to show me first. Which brings us here today. Masks. I'm asking you to wear them. I. Uh, even thought about writing on the face of mine before I came up here, but I didn't. Just the word respect. Because for me, this is about respect, frankly, for my own health, but for the people with whom I work, the businesses, businesses in which I want to visit and patronize, my neighbors, my grandkids, everyone. So if you've got an issue with wearing a mask, and as a constitutionalist myself, I'll tell you, this isn't a constitutional matter, this is a citizen respect matter. Put your mask on. If nothing else, do it for those around you and do it so we can get our businesses back opening. I'll tell you, as many of us know, uh, we've got businesses that are right on the brink of losing lifetimes of investment. It isn't because they've been irresponsible. They've taken advantage of the payroll programs and other assets that have come from the state and federal government but there comes a breaking point, and many of them are nearing that point. So on their behalf, I want to ask you, let's mask up to open up and to save those businesses in our community and, frankly, to save lives. Thank you. Seems like uh, a long time ago that I had the opportunity to be before uh, everyone, and I was joking that we all needed to not uh, hoard the toilet paper. Uh, we're in a little different situation now. Uh, we've learned a lot. And uh, I have the pleasure here of being with uh, Mayor Martinez uh, with the city of Pasco, Mayor Taylor with the city of uh, Prosser, Mayor Britton with Kennewick, Mayor Gary uh, with the city of West Richland, um, Mayor Linda with Benton City, and uh, Mayor um, of Connell uh, Lee Barrel. And at first, when, when uh, someone suggested that I speak, I thought, oh, this is a prank on the new guys, on me and Sal, because we're the newest uh, mayors up here. So we apparently drew the short straw, and uh, we get the opportunity to speak to you all about COVID. But in all seriousness, I, I, I appreciate the opportunity to speak on behalf of the mayors in the community on something that um, is very, very important and one of the toughest um, toughest moments in our history uh, uh, as the Tri-Cities, I believe. And in my opinion, we're at an inflection point in our community. We have a couple different paths we can go down. 
we can go down the path of uh, recovery. We can open up the front doors to our businesses, and we can kind of keep doing what we're doing, limping along um, without any end in sight to uh, an economic recovery for this area. Uh, we've been doing this for four months. It's way too long. Our community is suffering and our small businesses are dying. And while I personally disagree with the, the governor's approach, and I think I speak for the majority of the people up here to say that we were not happy with uh, the message that we got from him yesterday, um, you know, we, we passionately conveyed the message to the mayor or to the governor that we believe we can open up and we can mask up. And uh, like Commissioner Peck said, he basically said, prove it. So I believe the governor's wrong. I believe that we can do both, but it really doesn't matter what I think. It, it matters what, what the governor thinks and, and what we do as a community. I think we can walk and chew gum at the same time. And I think it's my, my uh, task and, and passion uh, directive to the people is to prove the governor wrong to show that we can get our percentages up, that we don't, that 60% is not enough, that 80% is not enough, but like he said yesterday, 100% mask up means 100% open up. And in my opinion, if we get there, we're gonna hold them to that promise. So I hope that as a community, we can come together and that we can do that. You know, there's a lot of, of information and facts running around, but I think we all have to understand that the governor has been given broad authority by the legislature to act in times of emergency. The state and federal governments have both declared a state of emergency. The president himself instituted the uh, Defense Production Act requiring different companies across the country to stop what they were doing and produce uh, PPE and ventilators and things like that. So it's hard to have someone look in the eye and tell you that we're not in an emergency situation as a country and a state and a community. But Regardless of the fact that the COVID numbers are increasing across the country, let's talk about where we're at locally. Our hospital capacity is increasing, or excuse me, decreasing. Our numbers of COVID patients are increasing. Um, and as the governor said yesterday, our ICUs and hospitals are becoming more full with people with the COVID disease. It doesn't take a scientist to realize that we have a problem and that we can't continue down the path that we're in. As Dr. Amy said, Similar sized communities with similar testing, three positive tests per day, we're at 45. These are the facts. We can have all the academic debates we want, whether what the governor's doing is legal or constitutional, and three years from now, I'm sure we'll get a nice court opinion that'll tell us that, but that doesn't do anything today. So I'm imploring people to wear their mask, that if they're protesting, that they do so peacefully with their masks on, and that we stop the spread in our community. Um, you know, the facts are that the state controls the business licenses, the liquor licenses. They control, through LNI, the authority to shut down businesses. The state has a tremendous control and authority in our community because there's a lot of respected community leaders that just think we should open up. My concern is that through the army of attorney generals and, uh, and attorneys that that the governor has that he would make a message in our community and that's not the right path to go down. Um, we have a clear message and directive. We have the science to back it up that if we can get our mass percentages up over 90%, our transmission rates will go down, our numbers will go down, and we will open up. Thankfully, this, while not a panacea, is a solution to our problem. And while experts like the Surgeon General were wrong and, and spread misinformation early on that masks don't work, we know that they do now. Uh, we have the facts to show that that is, in fact, true. And anyone that says differently is just ignoring the evidence. It makes sense that when the CDC says that out of every one person that tests positive, there's 10 people that are asymptomatic spreading the virus, that if you put on a mask, you're gonna reduce the spread. You don't know one of us in the room today could be infected. Um, you, you're most symptomatic before you presume, or you're most contagious before you present any symptoms. And we know that this is a respiratory virus and that as you breathe out, you have droplets come out of your, your mouth and that's how people contract the virus. So it just makes sense from a logic perspective and we're a scientific community and I think that we, we understand that. 
I could sit up here and tell you all the things that our, our elected leaders have done. Uh, we've been working day and night to open this community. We've done, we've had multiple conference calls with the governor's office, with the Department of Health, working along our partners in the, the local health district to do nothing but open up this community safely. And my point here is, is that this is a call to action, that you know, our community has come together in difficult times before. We came together in World War II. We came together in the Cold War. We've sent more than our fair share of people to the wars in the Middle East. And we're in a crisis, and we need people to act. And I think, uh, I think that a small sacrifice of wearing a mask when you go outside into the public uh, grocery stores, retail establishments, that that's not too much to ask. Now, I, I just want to give a little anecdotal information that I understand that, that uh, you know, I'm not perfect either. I've, many times I've got out of my car, I've gone to uh, the grocery store, you get halfway in the store and you're like, oh no, I forgot my mask. It's okay, don't worry about it. I'll just go in, I'll get something real quick. Uh, I'm asking that, uh, that those in the community, that you take the challenge to not do that that you go back to your car, that you get that mask, that you go back to your house, you pick it up, not to protect, protect yourself, but to protect the community. And with that, I'll just close with comments of one of what I believe is our most respected leaders in the community, and that's General Mattis, that he said in his recent public announcement, and that is, let's all do our part, let's listen to our health officials and our experts, wear a mask, and help our community open. If we do, I promise you, that I and the other community members up here will hold the governor to his promise and that we will open up. Thank you. Good afternoon and uh, thanks for having us. Um, I have with me today also, if I can see which side I'm on, uh, Rob Monocle to my left here who is the CEO of Lords, and to my right Chad Pugh who serves as the Chief Operating Officer of TRIOS. Um, I, I want to start out, I was asked to speak about hospital capacity a little bit, and I'll start out just answering a couple questions that I know we get often. To be honest, I don't think those questions that I'm going to answer here first are necessarily the right questions, and I'll, I'll get to, to that in a few moments, but uh, the questions we're often asked are, and how many ventilators do you have and how many ICU beds do you have available? And for Cadillac, uh, I will say uh, a couple things, just statistics. Uh, so today we have 11 patients on a ventilator at Cadillac. We have 37 vents. Uh, we've not really exceeded um, around that range, the, the 10, 11, 12, 15-ish um, at the most. And so we feel we're in pretty good shape there. We keep getting asked that question. I don't think that's one of the large concerns at this point. Uh, the second is around ICU beds. At Cadillac, we run a 20-bed ICU, uh, which stays pretty full. So you'll see numbers out there about you know, the ICU is full, and it stays pretty consistent. We have the capability to open up as many as 60 ICU beds should we need them. Uh, we have not done that, but we could uh, in the event that we needed to physical beds. Uh, the other questions we get often are around uh, PPE and supplies. I think the good news with this, uh, I'll call it second surge for lack of a better term, is we were caught pretty flat-footed the first time around with COVID. The whole world was trying to figure out what we were going to do. The supply chains were severely, uh, severely short. Uh, and now we've had time to prepare a little bit more. So while there is not a, a, a widespread fix to the global supply chain issues, we are in much better shape. Uh, as hospitals, and I know I've heard similar from my colleagues here when it comes to PPE supplies and so forth. Within the system that Cadillac's part of, uh, the Providence system, they have the ability to really shift supplies to where the hot spots are, and unfortunately, Tri-Cities being a hot spot right now, we've been the beneficiary of uh, supplies from uh, testing to the remdesivir drug that you have uh, heard about likely, and PPE supplies uh, shifted as appropriate, so we're in pretty good shape there. Uh, I think a, a better question for us all to be asking right now, and I really appreciate it when people in the community ask me this question, is how are the staff doing uh, at the hospital? How are your caregivers doing? And if you really stop to, to please not think about hospital workers um, or any other kind of first responders, EMS, police, fire, all the folks that are running in, into these, these dangerous situations as supplies, they are not supplies, they are people that are dealing with a lot of things. And when we ask the question about caregivers, um, here's some things they're dealing with aside from just us needing the right number of folks to, to staff the beds and doing the math on those very sort of cold statistics. Number one, these are folks that are having to stay masked all day long on their shifts. 
uh, and wear much more than just a mask if they're working in an ICU setting, in an operating room, elsewhere, to be able to safely care for these patients. They're donning and doffing equipment, constantly going in and out of the rooms, and their work has changed dramatically as a result of these numbers of patients that have gone up for us. They're taking risks not only with their own health, but with that of their family. We have a number of caregivers uh, that you've probably heard throughout the country that are either living separately from their families while this is going on to prevent infecting an elderly uh, parent or loved one that they live with or try to keep this away from their children. And then the stress of the very restrictive visitor policies that are part of this phase that we're in is bearing a toll on a couple of fronts. Number one, our caregivers are there when folks are uh, very, very sick or in some cases dying, uh, holding their hands, being with them in a way that previously maybe a family member could have helped with. And second, they're taking the brunt of a lot of frustration that's being expressed by family members that can't come into the facility because of the restrictive policies. Uh, and they are the face of all of that. It is, it is a heavy burden. Uh, I, I guess my, my message today really, really comes to this. I agree with everything that, that we've heard from the folks that have spoken up to this point. We need the Tri-Cities to open up for all the reasons that have been uh, talked about. And us at Cadillac, we, we definitely agree with that. I think the healthcare community writ large would agree with that. Our caregivers are all part of this community and we're tired uh, of all of this too and are ready to move forward. And we're here to take care of the community, whatever may come. We, we have a lot of work we have to do differently and we're willing to do what we need to do to support folks. I've heard a lot of talk as we have around the world about frontline caregivers and first responders being touted uh, as heroes. And that's absolutely appropriate, rightly so, as much here in the Tri-Cities as anywhere. Our team is appreciated, our teams are appreciative of all the well wishes, uh, the prayers, the cards, the donations of food and other things that have come our way. But let's please as a community not use these heroic people as an excuse to not do our part. I think their heroism should be a cause for all of us to be concerned enough to have their backs in addition to our own and those that we love. And extraordinary sacrifice on the part of a few in these groups is really not the answer to a crisis, uh, there's a, when, especially when there's a clear way for all of us to make a meaningful impact to help keep the whole community and especially these people that have been taking a disproportionate burden of it uh, out of harm's way. So I uh, thank you all for um, uh, the messaging uh, today that hopefully we'll get out in our community about the importance of wearing these masks. I appreciate it. Well, good afternoon, everybody. I'm joined by Chief Bruce from Richland Police Department. My other two counterparts from Pasco and West Richland were not able to be here today to join me. They had other conflicts. Uh, our message is simple as well. Uh, there's a reason for the order of events that went today. We started off with uh, the doctor, and she talked about a variety of things, including mental health issues. And certainly on the law enforcement side, we have seen a dramatic increase since March with people being shut into their homes and not being able to go out and about. And um, it is a crisis for some people. And I have provided all the media outlets with crisis numbers. Uh, so that you can, you can post that on your websites or your Facebook pages as well. But I want you to know that law enforcement across the Tri-Cities is also here to help. And part of that helping is to ensure that people mask up. I get asked questions about, you know, education versus enforcement. And we're all aligned on the fact that with any new rule or law that comes out, we hope for voluntary compliance. And most laws, we see very good voluntary compliance. And we are seeing good voluntary compliance, not enough in the Tri-Cities. And our message is very, very simple. Just wear your mask, mask up. And the reason for that is we wanna protect our families. We certainly wanna protect our friends and our coworkers. But more importantly, all of us care about our community. We wanna protect our community. So it's very, very easy for us to join not only our elected leaders, our healthcare professionals, other people throughout the community and saying, just simply mask up so that we can open up. We're all going to be working real hard to get those numbers down so that we can support our business community and we can get people out of their houses and we can get back to a normal that we've enjoyed here in the Tri-Cities. We have a great quality of life here and we wanna to continue to have a great quality of life and be able to get out and enjoy it. So please mask up. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So 
Uh, good afternoon. Um, when this pandemic first started, our first responders in hospitals, we were in need of personal protective equipment, or PPE, as you've heard it referred to. Um, we asked the community to donate supplies, and the community responded in a very big way. Now, fortunately, we are in a position that we have adequate supplies that we're able to um, support the mission our first responders and healthcare providers are serving. So today, we're focusing our efforts on providing cloth masks to our community. I'm in partnership with Washington State. 3.6 million reusable cloth face coverings were purchased for the intent to distribute these masks to our low-income populations. In Benton and Franklin County, we received 178,000 of these masks. Today, actually right now, and until 7 p.m. tonight, uh, Benton and Franklin County are doing a drive-through mask distribution at the Franklin County Emergency Management Office located at 1011 East Ainsworth in Pasco. Uh, while these masks are intended for our low-income population, we will not be requiring any income verification. We simply want to get these masks into the hands of those who need them the most in our community. If you are not able to participate in that drive-through today, we have also partnered with some of our human services agencies and provided them masks to hand out to folks. Um, and those agencies are uh, Second Harvest, so our Second Harvest food banks, you can check their websites. Um, during their food donation drives, uh, they will be providing the cloth masks. Um, Impact Compassion in Kennewick has some masks, and they are available for pickup Tuesdays through Fridays from 1 to 3. Um, our Salvation Army, St. Vincent de Paul, uh, Boys and Girls Clubs, Meals on Wheels will be providing masks to seniors as they do meal delivery. Our Union Gospel Mission has some, as well as Community Action Connections in both Pasco and Prosser. As we'd heard everyone uh, state, um, we are in control of our own destiny right now. We have the ability to simply put a mask on to help move us forward into phase two. So it's a simple thing that we're asking you to do. As Commissioner Peck had said, it's a simple matter of respect. And I agree with that. So um, mask up to open up. Thanks, Tri-Cities. Well, that's exceptional. We've got uh, drive through testing, drive through get your mask. We're making it as convenient as possible, Tri-Cities. So take advantage of that for sure. So my organization, Visit Tri-Cities, has partnered with several other community organizations, including Tridec, the Tri-City Regional Chamber of Commerce, the Benton Franklin Health District, the uh, Downtown Kennewick Historic Partnership, uh, and several other agencies to launch an initiative called Tri-Cities Open and Safe. And you can visit that at tcopenandsafe.com. There's a wealth of resources for businesses to safely reopen that can be found there. So you can find uh, templates to build your COVID safety plan, uh, which businesses need to safely reopen. Industry-specific guidelines, do's and don'ts for employers, and so much more. Also located on that page is the Tri-Cities Open and Safe Business Pledge. We have over 200 businesses that have signed that pledge, and it's a public declaration that these businesses are committed to preserving the health of their employees and patrons and ultimately our community. So if you're a business, we encourage you to take advantage of that. There's associated resources we have available for those, uh, those individuals that participate in that program. So tcopenandsafe.com. You know, for businesses, I don't know of a single business that hasn't been adversely impacted um, with their finances due to this pandemic. Uh, and businesses are looking for resources. And there's a wealth of, of resources out there, too, to help small businesses. So all of our jurisdictional partners that you heard from today, if you visit their websites, uh, the cities, for instance, specific to their cities, have grant opportunities available. There's other grants uh, out there as well, as well as loan programs from the SBA and the CARES Act, of course. Some consolidated information can be found on Tridex website. They have a business COVID resource page, so grants and loan opportunities. Daily, the Tri-City Regional Chamber of Commerce publishes a COVID-19 resource guide. Long list of grant opportunities there as well. And I would encourage everybody to check out the Pasco Chamber of Commerce, the Tri-Cities Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, the Downtown Pasco Development Authority, the Historic Partnership, Downtown Kennewick Historic Partnership, as well as the West Richland Chamber of Commerce. All of these entities have great resources available to uh, businesses in our communities and on the cities and jurisdiction pages. Pages, you'll also find resources for individuals as well. So be sure to check out uh, those offerings. Well, at this time, I'd like to welcome Mayor Martinez. We saw him earlier, but today we get to hear from him, uh, City of Pasco. Mayor? Thank you very much. <clears throat> Hello, good evening. It's a pleasure for me to be here today. 
I'm just going to give us a, a very short and quick summary uh, to all our Spanish-speaking folks in the greater Tri-City area and all the surrounding areas to kind of just recap to make sure that we all get the message because of how important this is. But before I start in Spanish, I just want to say that um, I, uh, for those of you who elected these leaders that are up here today and the leaders that you have, uh, you put your vote to a, a good test and these people are doing everything they can to ensure the, the quality of life and to move us forward as best we can. Uh, as they kind of um, uh, shared already, uh, they couldn't have more eloquently and vigorously expressed to the governor how important this was to our community and uh, how vital it was to keep our, or to open up so we can get our small businesses going from, the, from this pandemic and, and how they're suffering. And uh, there's a long list of things that we've done as community leaders and as, co as a community to push us forward. And um, as Mayor Luxon uh, has expressed, we're going to do everything we can and try to put the governor, uh, hold him to what he says that he's supposed to do for us. And, and there's one major tool, and, and that's the mask. Uh, and I'll get more uh, into that for our Spanish speaking. But it's vital and important that our community members understand the importance of putting our political views aside, perhaps, and, and, and maybe the things, the way we see them aside, so that we can help our fellow citizen in our, in our great cities of the Tri-Cities. So with that, uh, yo estoy aquí en esta tarde, me da un placer y un gusto estar aquí para representar a, a, la, a la comunidad latina para poder a comunicarles a ustedes la importancia de, de esta información que le voy a dar para poder um, avanzar en esta pandemia que estamos um, experimentando en estos días. Quiero decirles que los líderes de estas comunidades todos están trabajando muy duro para poder uh, avanzar y poder uh, abrir nuestros negocios y abrir las puertas para agarrar los servicios que nosotros uh, deseamos y que merecemos. Es muy importante de que la comunidad hispana y sabe, sabe que hemos hecho todo lo posible para comunicar la importancia de ponerse la máscara. Muchas veces quizás no tenemos las, las, los recursos uh, o no sabemos dónde podemos ir para, para obtener estas máscaras, pero si van a la internet, a la ciudad de Pasco o cualquier ciudad donde ustedes viven, pueden hallar los lugares donde pueden quizás gratis a recibir estas máscaras para poder a protegernos, no nomás a nosotros, para proteger a nuestros uh, amigos y nuestra familia. Yo sé que muchas veces quizás yo soy culpable de que al, a lo mejor me olvido de las máscaras cuando salgo del carro o, o que se me hace muy fácil a ir a un lado y decir que lo hago después, pero lo estamos arretando. Y la, y la importancia de, de no olvidarse sus máscaras, pónselos para cuidarnos unos a los otros, es muy importante porque por cada persona que se infecta con, este, con esta enfermedad, puede, que, puede ser que hasta dos, tres o cuatro más se van a infectar cuando uno lo recibe. Y los resultados que tenemos hoy en día es que es, ya sabemos que los números de los resultados positivos está yendo para arriba y necesitamos hacer lo posible para que, para que no suben más esos números, además para que reja, rebajen esos números y para poder a, abrir las puertas de nuestros negocios. El gobernador de este estado tiene la autoridad de hacer lo que está haciendo para proteger las personas de su estado, pero depende de nosotros que vamos a apoyar y que vamos a hacer lo posible y necesitamos uh, necesitamos a tomar esto bien en serio porque es un tiempo crítica que ya mero estamos para para voltear la esquina para poder abrir nuestros negocios pero todavía no estamos ahí y necesitamos a procurar que no van a subir los números así que le estamos le estamos pidiendo por favor hagan lo posible para para hacer este simple acto de ponerse la máscara cuando están en, en grupos tratan de mantener su distancia y la otra cosa que queremos estar seguros que no estamos aquí para asustar a nadie, estamos aquí para ayudarles y, y ayudarnos unos a los otros, estamos aquí para informarles que esto es muy importante para todos y ya sabemos esta comunidad lo importante que son los latinos en esta área 
y por eso aquí precisamente estoy yo para tratar de informarlos en español también y es muy importante de saber que todos los líderes de este, de este Tri-Cities están apoyándome para, para, y apoyando a nosotros para avanzar y seguir para adelante. No, no se detienen de ser lo bueno y vamos a seguir la lucha. Esta pandemia no, se, no, se puede, no nos van a ganar, tenemos que ganarla y dependa en cómo nosotros nos tratamos unos con los otros y, y lo que hacemos con la máscara para poder a, a ganar este, esta pandemia. Así que, otra vez, una vez más, si necesitan más información, infórmense. Hay, muchos, hay muchas oportunidades de ir a las ciudades o a unos lugares como el, el Distrito de, de Salud, donde puede ganar esa información. Estamos, estamos en un punto que estamos dependiendo en nuestros latinos para hacerlo bien. Vamos a hacer un ejemplo para todos y vamos a apoyar todos unos a los otros. Así que muchas gracias por su atención y vamos a seguir la lucha y muy pronto abre, abre, abremos los negocios que, que deseamos saber otra vez. Muchas gracias. So thank you very much. I appreciate all the support that we get uh, from the, for the Latino community. I express to them that our leaders are passionate and are willing to do whatever it takes that we all work together as one, as one mankind to make sure that all of our needs are met and that we can open up to Tri-Cities once again. So thank you very much. Well, thank you, Mayor. As we wrap things up, uh, as you've heard, great collaboration happened across our community, our jurisdictional partners. Uh, when I say community, Benton and Franklin counties, it's, it's happening across our cities, and it's exciting to see. But more work to be done, as you heard as well, and we're looking forward to that because it's more than the, our elected officials. The work that they're doing uh, is greatly appreciated, uh, and certainly our business partners, healthcare partners, law enforcement, and others. But it's going to take. It's going to take you and me, and it's going to take us putting on this mask so we can get back to enjoying those things that make the Tri-City so special for the preservation of community health, for the preservation of businesses, the restoration of jobs, economic vitality. Uh, and for me, I'm really looking forward to moving to the next phase, to sit on a patio of a local restaurant and enjoying a juicy hamburger, and I'm sure there's some folks that would enjoy that as well.